welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And look at this picture that is in this puzzle. I don't know how this has been achieved. Um, it's a puzzle called The Fountain and it's by Tobias Brixner, which is a name I'm not familiar with. So this must be a debut on the channel. And somehow it must be, I don't know whether Sven, our, our amazing programmer, has somehow allowed this to happen, but you can see well, it's very clear there's there's a fountain in the back in the background um now i've been advised by the testers to use a planar version to actually solve because it might obscure pencil marks when we actually come to put things into the grid so i've got a another version here but it, it sort of looks a bit empty doesn't it well indeed it does look empty without without the fountain in it and it's an extraordinary this is um uh, a chaos construction in the sense that normally in Sudoku obviously you have you're given the three by three boxes and here we've got to build the nine cell regions in the puzzle um like that might be one of them um ourselves and you'll, you'll see your eagle eyed there's not a great many clues in here so I am fascinated it's got four stars out of five for difficulty this one um so it should be tricky but hopefully not monstrous um, which brings me on nicely to this puzzle, Crux by Jay Dyer, which was monstrous, and I did do it this week, uh, and I've, I've been absolutely overwhelmed with the, the feedback. Uh, it took me hours to solve, literally, it took me um, two hours and 42 minutes, the video is, and I didn't think there was um, uh, an earthly chance that anybody would really want to watch that, but the feedback when I explained about this a couple of days ago was very much that, that you do want to, to see it. And indeed, I, I put I put myself on Patreon and the feedback on that has been really, really positive. Um, so it appears sometimes at least really, really long Lord of the Rings extended edition type length um, Sudoku solves are, are interesting. Um, so yeah, we're going to put this on the channel in the coming days i'm not sure when it'll probably be a morning release um but it's it's there on patreon at the moment so if you if you if you really can't wait to watch a very very long sudoku um video of a very very hard and brilliant puzzle jay dyer's crux is exactly that then then maybe check that out oops and let's go to this one um what else is going on yesterday there was a crossword video on the channel so if you like cryptic crosswords please do check that out and um, Mark muffed up the um, his wordle. So Mark Mark sort of, you know, he occupies two houses and at any one time, he, so that means he has two computers. And if he forgets which computer is meant to be where, it means he can, he can come a cropper. And uh, he recorded today's, well, yesterday's wordle, because I think he does wordles with a lag of one day on the wrong computer, and that meant he can't release it today. So he's released um, something on the channel this morning, which is, I think, him having a go at a variety of, not not wordles, but is it quadle and oct octurdle or something, the, the extra ones, the ones with loads and loads of wordles in them. So there's a, there's a, there's a bonus video, if you like, your wordle stuff on the channel from this morning as well so check that out um and do i have anything else to tell you well the other thing we've got of course on patreon is demono's short story uh, where you have in order to to finish the story you've got to solve puzzles that is our monthly reward for november lots and lots of great feedback coming in for that so do check that out um it's not that hard this month so everyone should be able to get through it and you've got until the 20th to send in the entry if you'd like to be in with a chance to win the competition um but I've got some birthdays to do, so let's move on to those. Matt, you've turned the big 4-0 today. And I know this because your wife, Helen, uh, wrote to us. And Helen said that she thinks that you might love her just a tiny bit more if she's arranged a shout out for you today. I don't know if that's true, Matt. Um, but um, yeah, I think um, your mum, Matt, is making you chocolate cake today. And Helen seemed a bit sceptical about whether the ratio of icing to cake was going to be correct. But I, I hope it is and hope, therefore, you're able to have a very good birthday. Um, next, Tom, over there in Portland, Oregon. It's your birthday today. And I know this because your girlfriend, Diane, wrote to us. Um, and and you do love chocolate cake. And apparently, you're, you're I think you're making together a themed cake today so that sounds quite good because you can control can control the ratio tom so um yeah anyway that's um 
Many happy returns. Apparently you both like it when there's a three in the corner. Let's see if uh, Tobias can deliver that today. Um, next to Yasmin, who's turned 25, down there in Geelong, Australia. Go Cats! Uh, I know this because your partner Brody wrote to us. Uh, and I, I actually, I've been to Geelong a few times, which is slightly surprising uh, given, given where I live. Um, I have relatives in Geelong. So um, yeah, if you ever jump, bump into uh, Andy, Tim, Georgie and Belinda, yeah, they might know me. Um, <laughs> anyway, apparently, I love this, Brody is baking his first cake ever today for, uh, for Yasmin's birthday and um, he is going to be respecting the correct ratios of icing to cake um, and he is buying an inevitable shop uh, replacement just in case it all goes wrong I don't think it will Brody I think it's brilliant that you're trying and Yasmin have a very happy happy birthday today and then finally to Mark who turns 61 today uh, your daughters Judith and Naomi wrote to us and said that you'd appreciate a shout out. And Mark, I obviously know you go by a different name in Sudoku circles and Mark is undoubtedly one of the most brilliant solvers that there is on planet Earth. Um, I don't, you know, he solves everything no matter how difficult and he is an absolute, um, absolutely brilliant recommender of puzzles so mark thank you for what you do for the channel and we we'll hope you have an absolutely brilliant birthday today now let's move on let's have a look at the fountain and see what tobias brixner has constructed for us um, these are the rules we have to place the digits one to nine once each into each row column and region of orthogonally connected cells regions contain nine cells and must be determined so what does let's just deal with this question that I do deal with when the word comes up what does orthogonally connected mean orthogonally connected means shares an edge so these two cells are orthogonally connected these two are not orthogonally connected because they only meet at a point so to make these purple cells part of an orthogonally connected region we'd have to introduce a cell like that so that we can pass from one cell to another always going along orthogonal connections and that's going to that's going to meet the criteria so those are all orthogonally connected those are not but they could be made orthogonally connected by adding on another one that is what orthogonal means um now what next on a green line i think the green lines are german whispers so on a green line adjacent digits differ by five or more um and then so this is a one so this square here has to be at least equal to six because it must be five different at least from one and we can't go downwards uh, negative numbers are not allowed um, now a cage let's look at this one a cage indicates how many different regions there are in all orthogonally or diagonally adjacent cells including the caged cell itself wow so imagine well, let's just say well, so what that means is you you sort of highlight an area you highlight all the cells that are connected with the the, the caged cell and we count how many regions exist within the black space and then we enter that number into this cell that's that's how i read that rule hopefully that's right um how many different regions there are in the in that in that space um so it's sort of like it's a weird minesweepery type constraint. Um, the weather, the weather is now the now the rain is smacking into the window. The weather this week has been absolutely appalling, and it continues to be appalling. Anyway, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking, and uh, let's see if I if I'm going to be drier in Tobias's fountain than uh, than I would be if I stepped outside. I suspect so. Um, right, so what do we do first? We must, we must be able to get a handle on one of these whispers lines. I, I mean, obviously, I mean, is it worth doing? Those squares have to be at least equal to six, so we might as well label them as such. And the most restricted caged cells out of this sort of cacophony of cages that they're going to be these two aren't they because these can't have numbers like nine in them uh, because there aren't nine cells 
connected to the cage so in fact the maximum that could be I was going to say six ah but I see right it's not six it's five and five matters because of the secrets of whispers this is right so this is how you start the puzzle um, okay yeah so let me try and explain that so th this cage is saying how many regions are there in those cells now you can obviously there are six cells but could there be six different regions well no because how would this region have nine cells in it if this black space consisted of six different regions clearly that can't ex that this couldn't have nine cells so there, there is a maximum of five regions in this space which means this is a maximum of five except that it can't be five because it's on a whispers line and let's put five in and see why that doesn't work what would we make this digit it's got to be five different at least from five so if we go upwards we get to ten or higher and if we go downwards we get to zero or lower and they are not sudoku digits and that's that's great because that must be true for both of those squares which now means these are one two three or four they're not one actually they're two three or four um, and why is this great well the reason I think it must be important is that both of these whispers lines now have their so-called polarity determined because because you can't put five on a green line every digit you can classify it as below or above five and the next digit will be the opposite polarity so we can see this is low so can, can this digit ever be below five now well, clearly not because it won't be five different from this one so this has to be the other side of five in fact it can't be six in this instance because this can't be one so that's a seven eight or a nine that's a seven eight or a nine and then we have to flip back the other way this digit can't be from the set six seven eight or nine it'll be too close so this is from probably one two three or four that one's going to be the same that one's going to be the same and these are going to be these are going to be high digits I'm just pausing there because the, the final secret of German whispers is related to the monogamous digits the six and the four and six and four are monogamous because they can only ever have one partner on a whispers line yeah okay it's trickier though this though because ordinarily if we had normal sudoku boxes so imagine this was box eight of the sudoku this couldn't be a six because six is monogamous it can only partner one and therefore that would put two ones on the line in the same box of the sudoku but here we don't have that luxury do we because we don't know we don't know what the region the region is that's in this part of the grid and if it's a region where these two cells are in different regions then this could be a six right the, no that doesn't work either so the other monogamous digit is four oh that can't be four because that will put two nines in the same row of the sudoku that one can be four though if both of those are nine okay let's finish off this one then so this one's one two three or four four is again possible because this one could be these could both be nine ah ah right okay let's come to the smile um, I'm not sure what the technical part of the fountain is that that's meant to be the smile of the fountain um, in fact it's like it's, it's a bit like a face this now I look at it without the the fountain background it's sort of got I mean the eyes are a little bit strange but that looks like a nose that looks like a smile and this looks like a chin to me with the neck going downwards it could have been called the smile this puzzle <laughs> um, anyway these three so by polarity those three squares are either all high i.e higher than five or all low lower than five well they can't be lower than five because there are not five digits in sudoku that are lower than five and the implication of these three being low would be that there would be but you can see if, if these are from one two three and four we'd have to repeat a digit in row seven so these are high so these are six seven eight nine now that can't be six it would monogamously put ones in both squares um, <laughs> the other ones might be able to be six not sure okay so these are all one two three and four but these can't be four because that would put double nine around them and oh my phone is buzzing not surprising it's been buzzing all morning uh okay so what does that mean 
means I suspect I can do well two things um, firstly there is a four now in row seven in one of these which means one of these is double nine either that's double nine or this is double nine um, but the other thing that's just worrying me slightly here Oh, good grief. This is worse than I thought, in fact. Right, that, there's a one here. I never see black given digits. It's because I'm so used to working with nonsense, i.e. stuff that I've had to deduce myself. I just assume I'm not going to be able to give it, get any, or won't be given any given digits. That one's knocking it one out of there. And that means this can't even be six. And, well, the reason I was looking, I was looking at these two digits thinking this is very strange because these are both high. And now they're enormous. Yo, know, well, okay, here's a similar to this square. How could either of these be nine? That's not possible. If imagine that was a nine, that would be saying in this in this region, I've got to have nine or in fact all nine. There are only nine regions in a Sudoku, because there are only eighty one cells in Sudoku, knowledge bomb. So but if this was nine different regions, that, that region couldn't get out. It would be trapped in and it would only have one cell in it, not nine cells in it. So there aren't. So, so that doesn't work, which means that neither this, that neither of these nights. And that's really weird because that means one of them is eight. So whichever one is eight. Has to. Well, the central cell of it. Imagine that was an eight. The central cell of it. Has to get out. So it will get out in, in some direction and then everything else around the eight would have to be. Hang on, let me just think about this. Everything else around the eight would have to be in a different region. So let's just think about that for a second. So imagine that this was an eight. This has to get out and whichever direction it goes in, let's say it goes that way. So that would be one region. So everything else would now be a separate region. So that would be a different region, etc., etc. What does that mean? And how on earth is this puzzle going to finish? I suppose this is probably the way because some this this huge concentration of regions emanating from this part of the grid is going to is going to do something hang, hang on a minute here's another thought here is another thought let's delete that How do you make right? How do you make this one equal? Eight? So if that was eight, how do we do that at all? You can't. You can't get this square out. No, oh, goodness me, this is very clever. It's really interesting. So and unusual. So look, if this square is an eight, I've now got to put eight different regions in this bl black region. This has to get out somehow and it has to get out in only one cell's worth of getting out. So it can't get it can't go out downwards because if it goes out downwards. Then it then one of these would have to be purple to get out, get it out of this area. But it, that's impossible because now I've got three cells in this nine cell region that are part of the same region. And therefore, there's only six cells left, which means there are a maximum of seven different regions in, in the black space and there need to be eight. So I can't go downwards. But if I can't go downwards, which way do I go? Let's say I go upwards. So that's one region, which means every single other cell has to be in this, a different region and that cell can't get out anymore. It's not allowed to join with purple. We need eight different regions. So it has to, it would have to go out that way or that way and thereby reducing the total count. So this is what is telling us. 
the order of this 7 and 8. We actually know that. That's This is 8, this is 7. Now, let's... I think what I'm going to do here, if it's okay... I'm wondering to whether to use colours or the line tool. Because what we now know is... Let me just show you what we know, but I'm not sure how I meant to, how what the best way is of depicting this. Th this this nine cell region, we know that eight joins to one of these cells, and but we know every single one of the of the cells surrounding this eight are therefore in a different region. So that is eight different regions of this Sudoku. There's still going to be immense problems with the seven, I think. But the question is, how do we delineate this? What, what I could do is make all these different colours. But I'm sort of tempted, I have to say, to do... Use the line tool, maybe. Let's just see if I can do that. Because what we're saying is... We're saying something like that, aren't we? And this cell... This cell has to join up to one of the cells to get out. I'm now wondering whether it can join that one, actually. If it, if it goes downwards, doesn't that give the 7 a problem again? So if we have that, so if the 8 joins the 7, yeah, the, this has to get out of the 7's 3 by 3. And it, yes, it can get out, but it, it's going to create an enormous region within this 3 by 3, which is going to consume too many cells. So the, right, so what we actually have is that situation. 8, no, hang on, that's wrong. Oh, no, that's right. Oh, hang on, no, I'm not sure now. No, we haven't we haven't got that situation. We've got that situation. This eight could still go sideways, couldn't it? Or I think it can go that way or that way or up. But it doesn't what it can't do is join the seven. So So it's broken. Oh, no, right. No, it's not broken. Right. Sorry, this is... I, I'm actually changing my mind about this. I'm going to do this with colours because as I was thinking about it there, I, could, I thought I'd broken it. But I, I think it's better to use colours. So let's go. How are we going to do this so that they're all nicely... I'll use the palette as it appears. I'll go green, purple. No, I don't want to give that one a colour because I don't know what that's joining to. Purple. That can be orange, green, grey. Okay, and I think where we need to focus, what we, what we did learn before is that the eight is joining to the green, the yellow or the purple. So actually maybe I'll just put it like that. It doesn't join to this green, otherwise the seven clue is broken. So let's do a count on the seven clue now. How many regions does it see? It sees one, two, uh, then it depends. It depends where the eight goes. If the eight goes straight up, then it sees three. If it only sees one, two, three, four, five. Ah, right, so this, this seven clue is telling us that the eight goes up. Because, because, watch this, if I, make the, if I make this not yellow, so this is now either going this way or this way to get out, how can we reach a count of seven? One, two for those, let's say, let's say this is green for the sake of argument, one, two, three, four. Now this has to get out. It's not the same as these two. It's not the same as these. So it's going to have to do that or that. So one, two, three, four, five, say, six. Well, where's the seventh coming? It's just impossible to get to seven. So the way that the way you can increase the count 
is you make this go upwards. Now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and this six goes either that way or that way. And let's say it goes that way. This is now a seventh region. It's available. So one of these is not this, and one of these is this, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So how many, have I freed up a color now or not? Have I, oh no, I haven't freed up a color, have I? I think I've only got one color left in my palette. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. I've only got, I've only got sort of the dark, let's swap this one for that one and make that one gray. And this green is going to go down here to get out and then it's going to go in one of these directions but I don't know which one. I don't really know how to show that. Um, but, okay, well let's change, change, right, there's loads of things that are suddenly now going to flow from this. Firstly, this seven has to be next to only ones and twos on on by German whispers logic. They're the only two digits that are five away. Um, so that means that's got to be a two. Oh, <laughs> I'm still seeing this as box eight. I was saying that that can't be a two. That's total nonsense. That that is very much available to be a two. Yeah, I mean th this red has to get out. This orange has to get out. This purple has to get out. This green has to get out. This can't be a three, it's next to a seven. These can't be seven, they're in the same row as a seven. These can't be eight, they're in the same row as an eight. Yeah, this is tricky though, because there's still something going on in the bottom row in the sense that let's imagine the green goes this way. Yeah, this is going to still push. It's going to put pressure on these. I think I've got to change my color. Well, I've got to. I've got to somehow delineate the fact that whichever way this seven region goes, it's going to continue, isn't it? And then the, the black region is going to go the other way. So the bottom row. Well, is it the whole of the bottom row? It's certainly those squares. No, it is the whole of the bottom row. Because if we, if it only goes, if only those squares were part of um, the black region and the green region, and then one of these turns up, it's going to fence in the orange or the red region. So the red region gets out, which means we're still one, two, three, four, five. We're still nowhere near nine cells for the green region. One, 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 two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's got to go at least to here, um, which means that side has got to go at least to there, which means the red has to get out, the orange has to get out. Oh, this is this is I know that this is sensational. The, the the title we've had we've had we've had the cleverest title ever in the history of Sudoku a few weeks ago when we did the difference of squares puzzle by Math Guy O Twelve. But this, I can feel what's happening here. I, I'm sort of, I'm the, the the spouts of the fountain are being built here. Uh, look, this purple has to get out. The blue has to go up. Uh, the green has to go up. The grey has to go up. The yellow has to go up. All of a fountain is spraying upwards. Okay, and now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have to go. So the, the the black, whichever one of these is black, is going to go high in the grid. But whichever one of these is green still has to go into one of those squares. So this is still a green-black pair, which means the red has to go higher. The orange has to go higher, which is going to push the green up. Oh, this is just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. That, that yellow has to go up. Now, can we keep that going or one, two, three, four, five, six. No, I see, I think one of these, well, I was going to say one of these could be, I'm going to change that. One of these has to be 
one of these has to be the final green cell. Hang on, I can that's I can do this square, this square. That square's counting how many regions are in that space. One, two, three, four, five. I'm actually going to do that again because I think I could miscount this. <laughs> Hang on, was that five or not? Yellow is one, two, three. It is five. Yellow is one, two, three, four, five, five. Okay, I think that's a five, and that's okay. That doesn't do very much because it doesn't interfere with any whispers deduction. You can never have put five on the whispers anyway. Um, oh, ah, that can't be six now because six is monogamous. It would put double one in purple. The same is true on that side by symmetry. Can't put six here, you'd have double one in light green. Seven, nine pair in row seven. And we know one of these is a four, don't we? One of these is a seven, and that will be surrounded by a one, two pair. So if this was a seven, this would this would be a one, two pair. Yeah, whichever one, whichever side has the black square in one of these two squares, that's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's going to go two higher, and that's going to push the red or the orange up higher, and that's going to put pressure on another of the fountain spouts. Oh, hang on, the blue is penned in. The blue and the grey have to grow higher, so the yellow has to grow higher. The yellow's hit another thingy, thingy, thingy. Um, the technical term for a caged cell. Um, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. So that cell, actually maybe this is the way to do it. We, let's just think about what we can put. Three, four, six, or nine. Yeah, okay, so that, that's already seeing three. So we, we would have known this was at least this. One, two, three. It's seeing three regions already. It's not desperately easy to make this even four, actually. In fact, how do you do that? Uh, let me just Let me just show you what I'm wondering about there. So if we... If we draw a ring around this square, if I have to get a different colour into this region without, you see obviously this one I could do that with, but that doesn't work because this is only a size 4 region, I can't do that. Now this, this one does reach, it can just get in there look, but again this is trapped in. Right, that's huge, because this is symmetrical, isn't it? Let me just check that it is symmetrical. Yeah, this is symmetrical. So there's no there's no way. I mean, obviously, you can't get a further away colour into that 3x3. Three three, and you, I don't think you can get green or purple in without having the same problem that you've limited the size of grey or blue. So I think that's 3, and therefore we can remove the uh, thingy thingy <laughs> that's a different thingy thingy last time there were three thingy thingy there were three thingies and a thingy 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 is very different from a thingy thingy there i said it buffalo 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 um now okay what does that mean ah Ah, well, okay, so that's telling, that's now telling us, well, it's something we would have already known, but now those five cells are only available, they can, they are only grey, blue and yellow, so that one, I think that's more complicated actually. Um, hang on, let me just go back to this and let's just have a look at that for a moment. What's this number? Yeah, 
It can't be 3, can it? Because that's 3. I can see it would be very easy to just slip purple in here. And then blue could get out. But we know these square, because of this 3, we know these squares are only available, that they only they are only yellow. Oh, they could include grey. No, they can't include. Hang on. Hang on a minute. What's going on here? How do I get this higher than three? So if that's four, at the moment this is seeing two. It sees yellow and it sees blue. So I have to get two other colours into these six cells, minimum, because this could be higher than four. But which two colours am I going to get in? I can't get red in. There is no way you can get red in. I mean, you could get, well, you could trivially get red in, but then you're cutting off purple so that you can't get red in. So the only way this can be four, can you get, you can't get green in, one, two, three, four, five. No, you can't, you can't even get green in, it's impossible. So the, oh, right, so the only way you reach a count of four is if you get grey and purple in, but you can't, how are you going to do that? <laughs> if you get grey in, okay, let's just get, get grey in as minimally as we could. That's going to turn yellow. That's going to turn blue. And now purple has the devil's own job. It can't do it. I mean, no, it, well, it can do it. Again, it can do it trivially, but it cuts off blue. So it can't do it. Oh, that's very interesting. So now this has to be less than, well, it has to be less than four and it can't be three. So it's, and it sees two. So it is two. But that's interesting because now that means all of those squares are yellow and blue and that's pushed purple that way which pushes ah ah this is, be this is beautiful good grief so that pushes red into the side and now we know that can't be the black square because the black square was going higher in the column than than this cell so this is green so all of that is green and that should be nine cells and it is so that's that's a black cell and that has to get out all of those now are black cells one two three four five six seven eight it must be one more nine so orange has to go up there green has to go up there gray has to now go around there and probably be a bit bigger yet one two three four five six seven eight how big's green one two three four five six seven eight nine so green goes there now, is this the right size? It is. So orange goes there and grey goes there. And then red, one, two, three, four, five, six. So red needs two more. So purple has to go up there. That's probably, no, purple's got one more to grow. But red's got no more to grow. So purple can't go there or these squares could never be reached. So purple goes there. These squares can only be blue and yellow. And this is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? Isn't this an amazing, it's amazing that just putting eight and seven into those squares causes this sort of, what well, causes the fountain. Um, now, can that be yellow? That doesn't feel likely. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it, so that's blue. Right, so blue has to get out. So blue, t those all turn blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these have to be blue. If either of these was was yellow, blue couldn't connect orthogonally. So those must both be blue. And these must all be yellow. And we can get rid of our three by three there. And, <laughs> and excuse me, but this is something I take pleasure from. We can delineate the regions with, with, um, with a plum and alacrity and a measure of OCD. There we go. Here we go. Boom. And I have to do the borders as well. Otherwise I'll feel bad. 
that one doesn't look like it's nine cells. I'm going to check that. I mean, it must be right. It all it all seemed to add up, didn't it? Uh, let's just double check that one. Yeah, that is nine cells. Okay. And look, we've built, we've literally built a fountain. I mean, isn't that fantastic? It's absolutely beautiful. Um, that's a seven by Sudoku. That's that that digit has to appear in yellow. Um, right now, what do we do now? Do we? Do you think that we? Do you think that we look at the whispers lines? Ah, no, I know what we do now. Of course. What we do is count how many how many regions that cell sees in that region. One, two, three. So that's three. Sorry, that's what we do next, isn't it? So that can't be seven. This can't be three, but this, this one is also caged. That one only sees two colours, so that's a two. Oh, this is un right. OK, so what's that doing? This two doesn't do anything, I don't think. That three does take three out of that square. Um, Okie dokie. Uh, oh, now if we get stuck now, well, we have got we've got a regular Sudoku with a little bit of whispers to play with, haven't we? That is what we're going to be doing now. So. Have I filled in all of the cages? Yes. Is there a way that we can fill this in now with some? I know one of these is a four. And that's going to cause either double nine there or double nine there. But none of these fountain spouts are in the same row or column. So I think both of those things are actually possible, bizarrely. What about if that's a six? Oh, ah, that can't be six because that's going to put two ones in red. So that's eight or nine. But that could be six because the line the lines are different length. One of these is seven, and that's going to have a one two in its fountain. Ah, that can't be two. Ah, right, that squares a one by Sudoku, and that's a three. That's done it. Right, so now this square can't be seven. It's too close to three. So that's four. Um, when I said that's four and wrote in nine, that was a strange thing to do, but you, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you can ignore my peccadillos. Um, this is a one, two pair now around the seven. This, oh no. Uh, this can't be one. we keep this going or is it going to that's not three hmm okay so we're slowly making a tiny bit of progress but we still haven't really got to grips with this have we well we've no we've done quite well I have to I have to confess we have done quite well that can't be three we've already had three here can we do I'm not sure I'm not exactly sure where I'm meant to be looking if I'm honest here um could we uh, it's, it's probably going to be law of leftovers type um things that we're going to have to work on so where are we going to start for that I don't know I don't know, I'm not seeing anything yet. What about... No, the idea I had then is not good. Three in the bottom row has to be... Oh, three in the bottom row actually has to be one of two places. So maybe that's helpful. Yeah, so three in the, in, the, in the left hand column has to be in one of two places. Because this three knocks that one out. I suspect that's not the key though. Um, we could 
9 means this is 8. So that's not 8. This can't be 4 anymore, that's got to be 2. 4 and 8 are only 4 apart. Right, so that's 1, that's 2, that's 4. The 4 has to have double 9 around it on the, on the whisper. This square is not 2. This one is 8 now, using the power of the 9 on the other side of the grid. 1 in this column, well, <laughs> it's appeared already. So 1 is in one of three places. 1 is in one of two places in blue, by the virtue of these 1s operating. Ah, OK, 7. Let's look at 7 in blue. That square is in the same position as 1s. So that's a 1, 7 pair. So this is a 4. And hang on, there was another thought I was having when I was thinking. Oh, it's the 2 I was wondering about. Yeah, where's 2 in this box? And the answer is in one of those two cells, I think. Because it can't be in this one because of the 2 down here. So 2 over on the other side of the grid is placed exactly there. Hang on, how have we got loads of 2s and I just hadn't appreciated it? We've got 6 in the grid. Where have we not put 2s? We've not put 2s into row... Yeah, well, row 8. Where are we putting a 2? It's not there because it's already a 2 in green. Not here, there's already a 2 in red. Not here because of Sudoku, so there's a 2 there. Right, how many 2s have I got now? Must be, must be one more than I had, so I have not put a 2 in purple. Where does the two, where, yeah, where does the two in purple go? Not there, not there, not there, not there. It goes there, so that's a two in the corner. No, start, no, you don't get a so song for two in the corner. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, we've got nine twos. Okay, do you think we can do the same with ones, maybe? Mm, maybe not. Uh... Yeah, not sure. Um, or I don't know. The thing about irregular puzzles is you can you cannot be on the same wavelength as them. That is for sure. It's like a it's like a cryptic crossword clue writer, and sometimes you just feel no, they're 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 not on my wavelength. Three in blue has to be up there. It's probably not important, but I've just seen it. Right, so three in grey is... No, really? I think it's placed. I'm not sure. I'm going to double check that because I don't really trust it. Three is definitely not there. Three is definitely not there. That three. Okay, so that seems to have to be a three. So let's double click three. So we have got four threes in the grid. Where have we not put a three where we might where we we feel we should be able to get one? Maybe maybe orange. There is a three. Nah, th there is a three in one of those two squares in orange. So three now in green then is where it's not there. And it's not here, so three in green. Right, so there's an X wing of threes, so that can't be a three. If you look at this pattern of threes, that's that's obviously two threes in this in this region, or in in that two by two. And there are only one there's only one three in row three and one three in row four. So we couldn't have this as a three, or we'd have three threes in two rows of the puzzle. So that must be a three. Now, did that do anything? I've now got five threes, but including a useless X-wing. So where is the other three? Oh, it's now uh, six. So there's another useless X-wing there and there. Bother. OK, let's try that column, actually, because that one seven pair means I've got three, five and six left to place. That square is five or six by Sudoku. Can't be three. That one. That one might be able to be any of those digits. Not sure. Um, and then oh, that one's the same look that can be anything I think 
don't think it's seeing any any clever digits what about this row then one six seven that can only be six or seven because it sees the oh that's lovely that one knocks out both of those squares so one in this row has to be there so and this this now is a six because seven is locked in there so that's a three or a five at the top that's not six Well, that's seven, obviously. Let's put that in. Yes, where's seven? That's beautiful. Where's seven in purple? It's got to go there, which gives me the seven, gives me the one. Now, where is seven in orange? Is that a good question? No, maybe not. <laughs> two, two cells left, I think. And we've put seven in green. Where else does seven have to go? How many? Let's just double click seven, six. We've got six. I've not put se um, in black. I've got to put a seven somewhere. Mm, it doesn't feel that good. At oh, what? No, I tell you what. What about seven in grey? Yes. It's oh no, no, no. Bother. Sorry, I didn't see the fact this could be a seven. So there are two possible positions for sevens. I got overexcited then. So. Well, all the, so this X wing on sevens is knocking seven out of this square in black. Seven can't be there. Seven can't be here. So seven in the bottom row is in one of three places. I think. Ah, uh, is this no? One of two places. So it's nearly good. Uh, no, one place. Well, uh, no, sorry, very good. That's a seven. Goodness me, that was compl That was a complicated way of finding out things. Um, Right, oh, I know where we should look. I've got seven digits in this row. So five and six are in the wings of those squares. Is that good? What about this row? Four, five and six. That square can only be uh, five or six. It does see four. That one. Not sure. That one also not sure oh that's nearly very interesting i'm looking at this row and i'm noticing four is in this domino that's that's slightly strange it's slightly strange for this column isn't it because wherever the four is there or there you can't put fours in those cells in column nine because they'll either be seen by that or they'll be seen by that in their same region so that means that four in red is in one of two places oh i thought that was going to give me four in purple i was thinking ah yeah but there's already we've already got four in purple um all right let's try four in blue then that's not four so four in blue is in one of two places. And four in green is in one of two places now. Because in the, that's just from the, the logic on the column. Now that might be good, mightn't it? Maybe, not sure not sure okay so what have we, what else have we got to work with ones can we return to ones and do any better than we did last time very nearly yes in fact easily oh goodness where does one go in green oh no i think i've oh, no i'm wrong well no i'm not wrong i'm sort of right one goes in one of those squares and therefore one in black is there and now I've got six ones. No, where's one in purple? I've not put one in purple and I think it has to go there, which means I don't get one here. So I get one here taking the position of a four. Yeah, I can get a one there. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got all the ones and I took the pencil mark of a four. So this is a four and we were only looking at fours a moment ago. 
and this is presumably going to do something very important and that is No, oh, no, hang on. Yeah, where's four in, in red now? That's the crucial question. It seems to have to go there. Okay, so that means four in blue we get. We haven't put four in green or grey. Actually, the other place we've not put four is in the black region. I think it's in one of two places, so that might be good. Let's have a think about fours again. Can we do this? Mm, don't know. <laughs> well, that's not four. So four is in one of those two. So if this was four, it'd be a four in one of these two. That would be four. No, that couldn't be a four because of this four. So there'd be a four here. I don't think that works. I mean, that's a very complicated thing to, to note though. So what I was saying is if this is four, I've got to put a four in gray and I think it has to go here. So that's a four means that's a four, which means that's a four in the bottom row. And now I can't put four at all in green. So that's not a four, so this is a four. And that means I don't know what that means actually. Does that mean anything of any value? I've now got six fours in the grid. I don't know, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. I, I sort of feel like I, I think the fours are probably finished somehow. I just can't see how to do it. Oh, no, I thought four. I don't want to make this pencil mark, but there is a four in one of these two cells. Um, okay, so we're going to have to think about something else. That cell is the same as that cell, look. Oh, that's right. Here, that's beautiful. Right, that's a proper point. That is a proper point. How could this be five? So if this is five, I've got to put five in this purple region. So if that's five, that's five. And now I've got to put five in the blue region and it can't go anywhere. That's lovely because this being a five pinches this cell from blue from being a five. And obviously these can't be five. So that those two are both six, which means that, oh, and, and that's fine because this is a six, but that probably means it's much less potent that being a six. Well, that's a five though by Sudoku and that's in orange. So five in gray is up at the top, which means that square becomes a three, which means that square becomes a five by Sudoku, which means we've got to put a five in there and that's got to be here. So now we know that, right, and we get a five there. In fact, these squares are two. No, they're not two, they're four, six and eight. And we can presumably improve upon that a little bit. No, uh, hmm. Okay, but we do know what these squares are. They're also four, six, and eight. And that one can't be four. So now these squares have got to be three and nine, and we know where the three goes. So that's three, that's nine, that's six. So in this column now, we need nine and five. And somehow that's not resolved. Is that really true? I don't know, that, I don't think that can't be true. But anyway, this these are five and eight. So that digit at the top is now a nine. That makes this an eight, which makes that an eight and that a five and that a five and that a nine. And now eight and nine come out of this square. And we've not filled all of the digits into blue. I think blue needs a five. I must have got all the fives in the grid now. I've not put five in row two apparently, but I should be able to. It's got to go here. It's the only place it can go. And that should that should make me quarate on fives. Um, 
and therefore where do we look now do you think nine in the top row means that's nine and that's six so this isn't six this isn't eight still still a little bit unresolved gosh i must i'm not focusing very hard on the top i mustn't forget that i've still got some unfinished business at the bottom of the grid these are a seven eight nine triple that's probably resolved that's not nine that oh that nine knocks nine out of both of those rather beautifully so this becomes a seven eight pair which we can do using this seven so that's seven apparently by pencil marking and now in this row we've not put in three and six uh, which again i feel like that's resolved but i can't see how that should be okay i still can't see how it's resolved i know it's resolved but i can't see how this is a three six pair is that what we're actually getting from this three six eight three six here three six here so that's four that's eight that's six that's three that's six that's three that's eight that's six that's nine apparently this one is six that one is four so top row looks okay that's four and that's eight and there we go what a brilliant puzzle that is that is absolutely brilliant let's take 53 people in 21 days well those 53 of which i am now one are lucky people indeed that is an absolutely stellar debut tobias just absolutely brilliant um absolutely brilliant i love the fact and i'm sort of amazed by the fact that that rule set and really it's just forcing this to be a seven eight pair isn't it i think i'm not sure how much we use the whispers maybe we did use them a bit i can't really remember now the start of the puzzle but but it was very clear that making this an eight seven pair was just absolutely it forced the great spouting of the water to happen in in the most it, it's a beautiful idea and a very strange idea to have found but executed brilliantly absolutely brilliantly take a bow to bias i love that very very cool let me know in the comments how you got on I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.